check this out. This is crazy. So small, I gotta sit Jeez. So small preface with this video. So this video is connected to the last video that I did, which was talking about ultimately how I found health with food. And so this, this video is me talking about basically how food affected me through anorexia and through my eating disorder. And if you can't tell, I'm sick, uh, <laughs> which is why I haven't been posting as much. I was traveling to Indianapolis for a wedding this past week and I got back and in my three day stint in the Midwest, I got sick. So that's pretty cool. This video is kind of a mix up, hot podge mashup of just offering my perspective on how food affected me when I was going through it all. In the other video, I kind of talk about and explain basically how I found health, but I, how I found a healthy relationship and peaceful relationship with food. But this one's talking about what made it not so peaceful during the middle or in the middle of it all. I hope you'll like it. And we're gonna go hiking a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna get to the top of this mountain and hopefully get some sick footage for y'all. All right, so uh, check this footage out and let's talk about how food affected me in the middle of it all. It's good for your health. Indiana did not have mountains like this. In like, I would say the, the developmental stages of anorexia, an unhealthy spot, my relationship with food was just very, very unhealthy. So I didn't let myself enjoy it, it being food. I even, I didn't really even view food as food. Food was more just a, a means to an end. Because I had such a negative view on things like calories or anything with high calories or fats or anything like that, I really limited myself to what I would eat, to the foods that I would take in. I I was always stressed when I ate because I was trying to keep track of everything in my mind or I wanted to give myself more time to decide what I would eat if I was going out or I would look up stuff beforehand if I was going out to like a fast food restaurant because I wanted to pick the lowest calorie thing. I started associating stress with whenever I ate and since I didn't eat that often because I was restricting so much, I started really just associating food with stress. And that is where like my bad relationship, my not healthy relationship with food really started, just really started developing. I liked to cook because I was fascinated with food, but at the same time, I didn't want to eat whatever I made. And so I would always make or bake like high calorie stuff, um, something like cheesecake or, or just bake or cook random things, but I never ate it. Uh, partly because I didn't want to take in a lot of calories, but also partly I think because looking back because I wanted other people to eat it So I was in a way winning like I was the head of the game like they were eating this high calorie thing and I wasn't It was kind of a, a twisted mentality to have but again, that's the eating disorder mentality And man, when, whenever you don't eat a specific type of food for a long period of time whenever you restrict something like sugar or, or fat You really just don't crave it anymore. So I honestly can say that I wasn't craving like sugar or desserts or anything like that, I was craving what I was eating, which were a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit. So I would eat a ton of apples and I would always crave apples. And when thinking about food, again, this is my perspective on just food in general, I would always just try to find the lowest calorie thing, whatever was low calorie and the most, the most, the lowest calorie and the, the most filling, that's what I would go for. And let myself enjoy anything. I would always go for stuff like, of course, like vegetables or fruit. I started drinking coffee, not because I liked it, but because it was an appetite suppressant. And I was just like genuinely interested in food. It, it's not like I look at Instagram now and I see how I would be interested in feeds now. Like there are just feeds full of different types of foods that people are eating. Like I would have loved that stuff for some reason because I was so fascinated with it. So my perspective of food, when I was in the middle of everything, food was always something on the front of my mind. It was always something that I was worried about. I was always planning and thinking about what I would have for my next meal. I was worrying about what my mom was gonna make for dinner because I couldn't control it and I wasn't sure if it was gonna be a lot of calories or not. And food became ultimately my enemy. Food was the one thing that was holding me back 
or getting in the way of me achieving what I wanted to achieve, which ultimately was losing weight. And how can I, how can one have a healthy and peaceful relationship with food if it is your sole enemy? You just, you can't. Because it's the thing, in my mind, it was that thing that was standing in front of where I wanted to be and what I wanted to get to. And if you're going through an eating disorder right now, I know that a lot of you line up with some of, at least some of those things. Food is always on your mind. Food, you can't stop thinking about it. You're always thinking about what's next. You're always planning ahead. You eat so few times, and because you eat so few times, you maybe savor the times that you do eat, but then you really fight against food the rest of the time. Going out is stressful where eating with others is stressful, where it's always just like pressing on you. You can't even think about other things that you need to think about because you're so focused on food all the time. Again, that might not be you, but I know it was me, and I know that there are a number of people that I've talked with even over the past couple weeks who are dealing with the exact same thing right now. So when did it change? When does it change? That is a hard question to answer because the perspective shift with food took years. It took a long time. It's, it's, I'm not saying it's going to take or has to take a long time, but I'm, I'm going to say that it's a process that it might not be just one single moment where a switch flips in your mind and you're like, Oh, well, I don't hate food anymore, or I don't obsess over it anymore. And so I'm fine for the rest of my life. No, <laughs> for me at least. And from what I know, it takes time to heal from that. And it takes time for a perspective to shift for food specifically. So when did it start to shift for me? You know, I would say, the as I was thinking about this, the first moment that it started to shift was literally when I was on my hospital bed after I was put in the hospital for being such a low weight, having such a low heart rate. I was in the hospital and the first meal that I had was this, I remember it very clearly, wasn't very good. At the time, it was kind of the best thing I'd had in a long time, but it was just this like chicken sandwich. And I, it was just sitting on, on a tray when I was on my hospital bed and my counselor came in and basically, I forget exactly what she said, but we, she basically, in a way, gave me permission to eat the whole thing. And here was a professional, in my mind, it was a, a medical professional telling me that I could eat the whole thing. It was like someone had granted me, again, permission to eat more than I wanted to. And and deep down, I was like, oh, really? Like I can eat this whole thing? And I, I know it sounds so crazy, but that was the first moment when... I felt like my perspective on food started to change. And so I ate the whole thing and I was still pretty hungry afterwards, but that was a first kind of mental shift of, of food that started for me. Now, of course, after I got out of the hospital, I still had all of my bad, bad relationship stuff with food where I would just, man, I would lie, cheat, and do everything I could to not eat, right? But that was one moment, the first moment where things really started to turn around. I would say that it first really started developing that peace with food in maybe late high school, which was when I was really in a pretty good phase of my recovery. So my weight was up and I was still doing all right. I was playing tennis and I, I was at basically the bottom, the lowest weight possible that was considered healthy for someone with anorexia. I had gotten to the point where I wasn't just like stressing over every single detail with food, but I would say that I still thought about food more than the average high schooler. I was still kind of trying to plan things out with food. like. Food was still a pretty big part of my day. Going through high school, like through senior year, my peace with food was like going up, up and up, meaning like better. And then I got to college and it was at the best it had been at probably my whole life since I'd gotten anorexia. I was thinking about food minimally, but still I would say it's it was not at a healthy standpoint, right? I get to college. Many of you, if you've seen my full story, you know that I regressed. So I went back down. I like only eat salads at lunch. We had a Chick-fil-A on campus. Thank you, Chick-fil-A. And I would only get the char grilled, not the like really delicious, tasty, standard Chick-fil-A sandwich. My friends would suggest going out to Taco Bell and I would get like kind of nervous or I would say that I wouldn't like Taco Bell because I truthfully did like Taco Bell. I just didn't want to go because they didn't have nutritious options. That to me was probably looking back the clearest sign that I still had problems. So did not have a peaceful relationship with food because I was still worrying and stressing about food specifically. Like still then the concept of listening to my body to eat something was completely foreign to me. In, in college on my way up. So I, when I got into college, I started going down, regressing, right? But then I got help and I started going back up. I would say even still at the up in college, I was like halfway there. Like if you put a cupcake in front of me, I'd eat half the cupcake and I'd be okay with it. 
but I'd like still throw the other half away. Again, countless cupcakes wasted past sophomore year of college, which was when I, I really got help and when I really turned things around. Past, like after sophomore year of college, that is when I would say I really started developing a peaceful and healthy relationship with food. And from then on to now, today, I can say that I have a healthy relationship with food. So well, that's all for me guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I also hope you enjoyed the hike. If you have any questions for me about anything, eating disorders, anorexia, self-help, self-care, whatever, let me know either down in the comments or shoot me a DM on Instagram. And like I said before in the beginning, if you wanna hear me talk about anything specifically in the eating disorder world or about my recovery and about how I got past anorexia, also let me know. Uh, here's to more hikes and to future stuff. We'll see what happens and we're gonna to try to get back down. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.